As the bear market drags on, you'll start to see more and more capitulation on Bitcoin, Twitter, and elsewhere. Bitcoin is dead. It's actually dead. This time is different. Bitcoin is boomer tack. And on that last point in particular, I thought it would be appropriate to spend today taking a look at RGB, a set of open source protocols that promise scalable private smart contracts on Bitcoin. And after a significant period of development, these protocols are just starting to get rolled out. And so I am excited to have a further look. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur at Bitcoin Club and all around raging capitalist. And I've been meaning to do a video on RGB for some time now. The timing felt right and appropriate for two main reasons. Reason one is that the RGB maintainers and contributors are starting to release significant functionality over the coming months. And the second is that those of you who spend a lot of time on Twitter probably saw all the Nick Carter drama. I'm not gonna comment on the drama today, but I just find it funny that every time something like this happens, you start to inevitably have Bitcoin detractors coming out of the woodwork saying, yeah, yeah, you know, Bitcoin's boomer tech, it's boomer tech. And RGB is, I think, one of the better examples of why that is simply not true. And I just don't think a whole lot of folks are aware of what this technology can bring. So you're not gonna wanna miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends. As always, it is a pleasure to have you. And for those new to the channel, I welcome you as well. Like this type of content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our growing merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including a whole slew of tutorials on how to acquire Bitcoin, how to secure Bitcoin, privacy best practices, running your own node, spotlighting emerging new technology such as today's video and more. You want it, I cover it. That is how this works. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the meat for today. All right, so let's kick this discussion off with a bit of motivation as to why any of this matters. There's been some momentum recently about this idea of issuing new assets on Bitcoin through something like Taro, which was announced at the Bitcoin conference just a few months ago. There's also over the years been lots of discussion around smart contracts on Bitcoin, extending what Bitcoin can do. Those of you who have been watching this channel for some time know I've covered things like stacks in the past, which I think is a really interesting take on that. But suffice it to say, there's a lot of use cases here, right? Being able to issue things like stable coins on Bitcoin and on the Bitcoin Lightning Network, that sounds crazy and totally against and anathema to the mission here. But on the other hand, if folks are serious about, you know, mass adoption of Bitcoin, being able to issue assets, whether it's fungible tokens like stable coins, or even non-fungible tokens is going to happen. It is happening, right? And smart contracts are also important. Getting money right is first and foremost, but you also do need DeFi, you know, decentralized finance. As we've seen a lot of what masquerades as decentralized is actually, you know, more of a dyno or decentralized in name only. But all of these are important things that are going to further the mission of individual self-sovereignty. So naturally over the years, folks have looked at different ways on how to do this. A lot of people forget or are not aware that the original concept for an NFT originated on Bitcoin through something called colored coins that dates all the way back to 2012. And the idea was that you could quote color the coin as we can see in this diagram. So you have a Bitcoin transaction at the top, you've got your inputs and then you have your outputs. So any change that gets returned to an address. And then you may have this additional bit of metadata or context attached to the op return or the op code return that allows you to put in some arbitrary metadata, such as in this case, 20 blue tokens to Bob. So you've basically colored this output from this transaction, right? And a normal Bitcoin node is going to be verifying the overall transaction and ensure it respects the overall validation rules of global consensus. But then you may have a separate node and a separate protocol that verifies and interprets the logic embedded in this example. And so by coloring different UTXOs or unspent transaction outputs in this way, that really was the genesis and impetus for thinking about, you know, colored coins or NFTs or just tokens on Bitcoin. And at the time, this was a huge deal. 
You went on to then have in 2014 Counterparty, which is a peer to peer protocol built on top of Bitcoin. Ultimately, a lot of that started to lose favor as you have the introduction of Ethereum, which really branded itself around smart contracts and enabling these more complex use cases. Subsequent to Counterparty in 2014, you had Peter Todd release research in mid 2016 with this idea of single use seals which we will discuss, and some contributions from Giacomo Zucco that propose this kind of blockchain-less way to enable smart contracts. And so that all happened, then you had Ethereum, but there are problems with any blockchain-related solution to the need for smart contracts and token issuance, etc. And those two problems can usually be boiled down to, number one, blockchains don't scale. This is why you see all sorts of efforts around scaling solutions, L2 solutions. And it's the case that public blockchains are just that. They're public, they're transparent. There's not a lot of great privacy embedded by default. And so in the kind of blockchain smart contract paradigm, not only are the details of the smart contract imprinted onto the blockchain itself and viewable by anyone, but you're also now forcing every node on that network to all verify and execute that smart contract. This is not only wasteful, but it can contribute to high gas fees that have really plagued uh, Ethereum and others. So what is the solution to these problems? The solution offered by RGB, which by the way, stands for really good Bitcoin, is client side validation. So the core concept with RGB is that you're moving a lot of the work off the blockchain. So you're still using the blockchain, in this case, Bitcoin, for ownership, for asset ownership, and to commit to the state of these different smart contracts. But the actual smart contract code and related data itself is completely off chain. So said another way, asset ownership happens separate to asset validation and kind of transfer of those assets and the validation therein. And that's a really big distinction from the paradigm that is have all smart contracts in this kind of global state machine that is a blockchain. The implications of this is that really only the parties that are actually a part of that contract have to engage with it. You don't need every single node on the network to agree and execute that contract. So let's take a look at an example of how this actually works. Importantly, RGB smart contracts and related tokens and the state they're in are linked to actual Bitcoin UTXOs or unspent transaction outputs. That's a critical concept to keep in mind. So for example, if I've created some additional token and I want to move that token, I will actually need to conduct an actual Bitcoin transaction. And so in this particular case, Bitcoin transaction A is going to include a commitment to a message that contains the different RGB sort of asset context. So if we're trying to move this token from A to B, let's take a look at how that happens. So let's say we have those tokens that are assigned to output one of Bitcoin transaction A. So output one is serving as what Peter Todd called a single use seal. And so as part of spending output one from Bitcoin transaction A, we're committing to the RGB transaction. And what the RGB transaction is doing is it's moving the tokens that are attached to Bitcoin transaction A output one to completely different UTXO, which is Bitcoin transaction C output two. And Bitcoin transaction C isn't even displayed on this. And that's part of the point. Essentially what's happening here is you're, you're sort of teleporting the tokens that were originally attached to Bitcoin transaction A output one and moving that over to output two in Bitcoin transaction C. And so what's pretty cool in this example is that the tokens attached to that initial UTXO have been teleported to another UTXO and there really isn't any on-chain trail of that happening. So this is very good for privacy. And what's also cool about this is it makes all of this more scalable. So the RGB specific data here is being transmitted off-chain through communication channels that default to the Lightning Network. And essentially the receiver of this payment is the one that's doing the verification of the asset transfer. And so the receiver here, as we can see in this diagram, is basically validating the history of this asset back to its genesis. Now you may say, well, that sounds exhausting. This is actually incrementally beneficial versus what we have today where your nodes are validating the entire history of the asset. So in this case, the receiver is only validating the transactions that are relevant to the particular issue at hand. And so conceptually to help put all that together as a recap, have the Bitcoin blockchain 
that is controlling ownership. And the different Bitcoin UTXOs are being used as these single use seals, which bind the state of these smart contracts and related assets to the Bitcoin blockchain. But then all the kind of business logic, asset validation, et cetera, is happening off chain. RGB also brings other nifty privacy features like blinding secrets. It works directly with the Lightning Network. And there's even built-in solutions for things like data storage through something called Bifrost. So you don't necessarily need to use something like IPFS. So fine, but at this point you may be asking, well, how exactly does this compare to a number of other technologies that we see, whether it's uh, altcoin L1s like Ethereum or other solutions. And so the big drawback for L1s like Ethereum is that they just, block Blockchains don't scale, right? They're not designed to scale. That's why you have scaling solutions such as Polygon in the case of Ethereum. But generally speaking, you can end up with high costs to run these nodes and potentially less decentralization as a result of that. There are Bitcoin side chains like Liquid that offer the ability to issue assets as well, but they're typically gonna have this kind of federated model where you can peg in your Bitcoin in order to get LBTC or liquid Bitcoin, then there's a permissioned process and a federation that essentially allows you to peg out or get your original Bitcoin back. And I think for a lot of people, this can be a non-starter. There are things like Stacks, which is a layer one blockchain in its own right, it anchors into Bitcoin through a novel consensus method called proof of transfer. I do like Stacks, I think it's really interesting. I've done videos on this channel where I've gone into it in more detail. But again, it would also face the potential drawbacks of some of the layer one considerations we discussed just a moment ago. So all in all, I think this client side validation paradigm is a really thoughtful way to do and enable smart contracts and additional functionality and use cases. But there certainly are use cases that need a global state. AMMs or automated market makers are often referenced as an example. I do know there is a DEX for RGB, so maybe someone smarter than me can comment on how RGB might address those types of use cases. So where does all this stand? Basically since 2019, Maxim Orlovsky has been leading the development with contributions from a number of other folks. A public preview of all this was introduced last May in 2021, but you've then had a ton of different development culminating in what is now the very beginning of the release of these protocols. It's part of why I wanted to do this video now. So as you can see from this roadmap slide taken, this was back in uh, March of this year. The RGB protocol itself is essentially being released as we speak. If you follow Maxim on Twitter, you will have seen a number of different announcements related to this. And then as you can see, they are slating August of this year for things like peer-to-peer -peer RGB asset and NFT transfers, and then RGB enabled lightning channels at the end of the year. The final note I'll make here is that there are a lot of similarities between this and Taro, or the Taproot asset representation overlay that was announced at the Bitcoin conference just a couple months ago that essentially promises a lot of the same things, especially around token issuance on Bitcoin. I've anecdotally seen Giacomo on Twitter say things like Taro is sort of a ripoff of RGB. So that's actually pretty interesting. I don't know if there's tension there, but it would be nice to see those two things come together. Because again, I think there's a lot of similar points of design philosophy and actual technology that's being shared and overlapped across the two. So it remains to be seen how that comes together and perhaps dovetails with the Taro development. With all that, let's go ahead and conclude today's video. So there you have it, RGB, a very different paradigm for thinking about extending use cases on Bitcoin, including token issuance, smart contracts, and more. There's a lot of gory depth that I skipped over as part of today's video. I wanted to stay relatively high level. So I will leave a number of resources in the comments down below for you to take a look at if you're interested to dig in more. But all in all, I think this is just an incredible example of really serious development that's been happening for the last 
couple of years in quite a low key fashion, which tends to be the style of builders and developers around Bitcoin. But now that chunks of the protocol are starting to get released, I think you're gonna see a lot more on this as we go forward. But I'm curious to hear, what are your thoughts? What are your reactions to RGB? Are there potential alternatives you'd like to see future videos on? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this useful, you already know what to do. Smash that like button, share the content that really does help the algorithm these days and helps get this in front of more folks. I really do think these are the types of discussions and conversations we should be having as a community. For now, we'll go ahead and leave this video here. As a reminder, my friends, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.